Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I mentioned it in this morning's video, and I wanted to just mention it again, guys. I do have an imposter on Twitter, and it looks like he has blocked me here. It is Working Money Channel underscore. So if you guys are seeing this, that is an imposter. Uh, and if you come across him, please do report and block this fool. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. It's hard to keep up with these imposters on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, but anyway... All your help is greatly appreciated. I wanted to bring this up, guys, from XRP Crypto Wolf. Bank of America survey found that 81% of fund managers still think Bitcoin is a bubble. So we were thinking, look, cryptocurrency going mainstream. You know, more hedge funds are accepting Bitcoin and more pension funds and more institutional money is getting into Bitcoin. Yet 81% think it's a bubble. Over four in five or 81% of hedge fund managers believe Bitcoin is a bubble according to a recent survey published by Bank of America. In addition, the survey found that being long commodities are now the most crowded trade with long Bitcoin coming in second place. Commodities are raw products like oil, gold, silver, and lumber. Precious metals are thought to be an effective hedge against inflation, which has become a growing fear as of late. The bank surveyed a total of 224 fund managers with over $650 billion in assets under management. So we're all seeing a big shift now. Uh, commodities like oil, gold, silver, lumber, these are what people are focusing on to hedge against inflation. And many are suggesting that Bitcoin is in a bubble. The survey demonstrates that a lack of understanding uh, of what problems Bitcoin solves is still prevalent in certain sectors. It is still seen as just another asset to trade by some at this time. Uh, this coming from Jason Dean, analyst at Quantum Economics. Uh, and that's what he told Decrypt. Uh, he added that the fundamentals support the position that Bitcoin is poised for significant price appreciation though in the future. Of course, we know Bitcoin still a volatile bet. Uh, you know, we know how this goes. We know how the cycles roll, uh, but it's interesting to see fund managers, the majority of them, still thinking Bitcoin is in a bubble. And uh, we're also seeing this, uh, just to that point that uh, a lot of this institutional money is hedging against inflation. This coming from the rock underscore XRP here on Twitter. Sure, he's hoarding cash. If you believe that, you better check yourself. So Lucky John not really buying it, but Jamie Dimon says JP Morgan is hoarding cash because there's a good chance inflation is here to stay. Just some of the key points here. JP Morgan Chase has been effectively stockpiling cash rather than using it to buy treasuries or other investments because of the possibility of higher inflation will force the Federal Reserve to boost interest rates. This coming from Jamie Dimon on Monday. Uh, we have a lot of cash and capability and we're going to be very patient because I think you have a very good chance inflation will be more than transitory, he said. The bank now expects $52.5 billion in net interest income in 2021, down from $55 billion it disclosed in February as the firm stockpiled cash and on lower credit card balances. So banks stockpiling cash, assuming interest rates will go up uh, to kind of mitigate the inflation. And I mean, we can't really deny it, guys. Ever since uh, the beer flu pandemic hit and uh, everything was locked down back in March of 2020, the market just collapsed. And what happened? Everybody was at home. Some people were working. Some people were trying to work. Uh, some people were worried that they weren't going to pay their bills. But there was a large faction of the public who, you know, maybe had a little bit of money saved up and decided, well, you know, if I can't go out and work, I think I'm going to start day trading. And so what they did was they opened up trading accounts, the do-it-yourself ones that you can, you know, trade from home. They put their money in the stock market and just kept trading and trading and trading and trading. Okay, this was March 2020. And this is today. Stock market has never looked better. Now, on paper, it looks really, really great. But this is very concerning for many people, and uh, I think banks are seeing that the writing's on the wall. Inflation uh, is not helping matters, and so is this market going to collapse? Chances are it will. There will be lots of wealth that is wiped out, and I have a feeling that, you know, there's a lot more pain left to come. This could be when the World Economic Forum finally introduces that great reset initiative to completely overhaul the financial system and completely, ultimately, overhaul the lives of everybody, whether that's financially, socially. Uh, and so I wanted to bring this up, guys, a new era of digital money. This coming up from the International Monetary Fund. Digital forms of money could be a boon for 
for emerging markets and lower income economies if the transition is well managed and regulated. Uh, so this is just a, a document, uh, an article that they put out with regards to digital money, giving us the common people kind of an idea of where this is going. Digital money has the potential to transform the financial sector. Emerging markets with lower income countries stand to gain the most from this dramatic shift. Broad and inexpensive access to digital money and phone-based transactions could open the doors to financial services for 1.7 billion people without traditional bank accounts, and countries may grow increasingly connected, facilitating trade and market integration. The real-world impact is significant. So again, you know, talking about banking the unbanked, this entire narrative that we are on the precipice of something very, very different. Now, they're not calling this the Great Reset. We know the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is connected very closely with the World Economic Forum. We also know the IMF has ties with Ripple, as does the WEF. And this narrative is being put together right under our noses. Alter of Ego here on Twitter posted this. Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, the World Economic Forum. Now, he's posting this screen grab of uh, Galia Benarzi. She is the co-founder of a company called Bancor, one of the world's first open source protocols ensuring on-chain liquidity between blockchain-based assets, uh, inventor of the automated market maker, now a building block of decentralized finance or DeFi. More than $2 billion in token conversions have been processed via Bancor as the protocol impacts organizations and people across the globe. Uh, the blockchain teams up with real-world communities issuing local currencies. Gallia was recognized by Forbes and Glamour magazine as the leading woman in crypto. Uh, she has been featured on Bloomberg TV and CNBC and has spoken at the United Nations TEDx and the Oslo Freedom Forum on Monetary Theory and Innovation. Okay, listed up here on the World Economic Forum's website. Of course, we know the World Economic Forum also very Ripple friendly. And what I noticed down here highlighted was quite interesting as well. She was a venture partner at Peter Thiel's Founders Fund and was also one of the organizers of Bretton Woods 75. So I wanted to dig up some more information, guys. This was from three years ago. Friendly reminder that Ripple is financed by venture capital firms Anderson Horowitz and Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. So Ripple was also funded by Peter Thiel. This article goes way back to 2013. Big name investors back efforts to build a better Bitcoin. So you remember when Ripple was actually called OpenCoin? News today from OpenCoin, a startup that today launched its own digital currency called Ripple, and tools for making transactions in other currencies, including Bitcoins, suggest that may change. The company says it has attracted early investments of an undisclosed size from established venture capital firms like Anderson Horowitz, which reportedly made over $100 million when Microsoft bought Skype, and Lightspeed Ventures, one of the first investors in networking company Nakira, which sold to WMware last year for $1.6 billion. OpenCoin has also received investment from early stage wing of the Founders Fund, a venture firm owned by PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel. So a Ripple and XRP connection, of course, at that time called OpenCoin and Ripple. Uh, connection to Peter Thiel here back in 2013. Of course, early investors in this. And Gallia Bernardzi's Bancor company, also funded by uh, Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. She was also an organizer at Bretton Woods 75. Now, this happened a few years ago. Bretton Woods 75 is a global dialogue to honor 75 years of economic progress and to revitalize the spirit of Bretton Woods now and for the future. As the 75th anniversary of the Bretton Woods Conference approaches, this was uh, again, from uh, 2019, the rules-based international economic system and its staunchest supporters face a significant challenge. How to ensure the global economic system evolves and endures to meet the challenges of the next generation. Of course, all in line, despite the fact that this was before the pandemic, all in line with the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Initiative. At least that's how I read this. And just to give you guys a bit of context, uh, what Bancor does. So Bancor protocol is a standard for decentralized exchange network used to allow for the automated conversion of currency tokens into other tokens, including across blockchains without the need for an order book or counterparty to facilitate the exchange. Also, one thing that I wanted to point out about Bancor is that it is cryptocurrency agnostic, so it doesn't rely on any one particular cryptocurrency. The protocol is a standard decentralized exchange network used to allow for the automated conversion of cryptocurrency tokens into other tokens across blockchains without the need for an order book, including across blockchains. But the interesting thing I saw down here was its history. Bancor protocol white paper was first introduced in 2017, of course, by Gallia Bernardzi and others. And Bancor's network is registered in Switzerland. The the company takes its name from John Maynard Keynes's currency concept called the International Clearing Union or ICU, which proposed a supranational currency 
referred to as Bancor, an idea to redevelop the system of international trade in the 1940s. So taking its concept from John Maynard Keynes, a concept which proposed a supranational currency. So this is just the wiki page. There is some more information here. I will link this in the description uh, for those of you guys who are interested in reading more about Bancor. And when I go back to this tweet here, we have a little clip here from Alter of Ego. He posted this clip of Gallia Bonarzi basically describing Ripple technology. Listen to this. One of the main challenges with currencies, especially new currencies, is liquidity, which is how do you convert them into another currency if the other currency is actually the one you need in this moment. Um, today we use exchanges, uh, so currencies get listed on exchanges. There's a lot of inefficiencies here. First of all, it's not easy to get listed. Second of all, there are exchange fees, conversion fees um, that you're paying to middlemen in the center. There's a lot of counterparty risk when you deposit your coins or your tokens into these exchanges, security risks, regulation risks. And as we start seeing more and more tokens emerge, and we're talking millions of tokens, uh, the existing exchange infrastructure is not going to be able to support that. And the currencies that are have the highest liquidity risk are actually the ones that are small and lightly traded, um, because there's no profit to be made in an exchange uh, with a currency that has a low trade volume. And so even though you might have tokens tokens that have great applicability in society that are very useful to a community or for a small project, um, they'll have no liquidity and they won't be able to exist. So a lot of what she's describing does sound indeed like Ripple net technology. Now I don't want to confuse you because Bancor does something similar to Ripple, of course. Automated conversions of cryptocurrency tokens and other tokens across blockchains without the need for an order book or counterparty to facilitate the exchange. But let us not forget, guys, that the World Economic Forum did just release this community paper this month, June 2021. And right down here in the paper, what was it, page 17 was it? Page 17, we've got the cryptocurrencies that they outline here as cryptocurrencies and DLT solutions to pay attention to. Of course, the XRPL being on there, XRP boasting over 1,500 transactions per second at 0 0.0003 cents per transactions and settles in about three seconds, which keeps me optimistic about XRP's role in this new financial system. Gallia Bonarzi, co-founder of Bancor, of course, also part of the World Economic Forum family, essentially describing on-demand liquidity here, RippleNet technology. You put this on the backdrop of what is happening now in the financial system, and it seems to me like cryptocurrency integration with RippleNet is just the next logical step to come. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.